And that was the we needed, courtesy of the number of cars. 36 cars have checked in for this evening, 36 cars in total. We will require a C main, and from there we'll move into a B main. And tonight's 30 lap A main will feature 18 cars at this point. Any changes will bring you up to speed with that. Vintage sprint cars, you said, Jake, will be also on the program tonight. What a revisit to yesteryear, and I always get a thrill in seeing that black and silver top wing number 10, Kevin McCallum. He's just a genuine star. He's one of our valued Sprint Car Racing Association of Victoria officials. He's on the infield at each and every one of our Eureka Garages and Shed Series rounds, and he gets the chance to not only be an official here this evening, but also the hot lap. He's number 10. It's such a cool thing to see one of our very own get an opportunity here. You can see him strapping in on the main straightaway. Gee, there's some big race cars, isn't there, mate? Yeah, it certainly is. We had the pleasure of uh, watching these guys last time out at Premier Speedway not too long ago. And they actually put on, I know that Gary Ross was there and said it was a little bit of a uh, spirited demonstration, but there was certainly some racing going on from a, a few uh, drivers in particular. But great to go back in history and have a little look of the evolution of sprint cars. Tim Hutchins is not one of those in the GBE Bendigo. GBE equipment, number seven car. He's in turn number one. Tim Osborne's just a star, isn't he? The amount of work that he's put into that Black Magic SA6 of the very famous Bill Barrows. It is such a piece of artwork as he rolls out of turn number two. Les Feltham is at the wheel of the Castrol. The Castrol Maxim, the New South Wales 2. Replica of the Gary Rush car from the early 90s. Jace is down here. I know Jace got an opportunity to race that car in that feature last week. Jace, I love it, mate. It's just a cool-looking hot rod. Yeah, it's coming really well. Thanks, Gav. Um, we, we just wanted to really put something together for a tribute to a legend of our sport in, in Gary Rush. The uh, appreciation day at, at uh, Waterball at the Classic and absolutely loved it. He, uh, he signed the wing and he signed the panel and yeah, such a humble guy, he's uh, just a legend, so. Your dad's like a kid in a candy shop. He's so excited watching you roll some laps last week down at Warnable, and I love it for him. Yeah, well, I've, I've uh, put a lot of time and effort in for him too, so uh, over the years, crewing from about 10 years old, I suppose, and I'm, I'm in my 50s now, so we've been in the sport for a long time, but he, he loves it. He's 78 years old now, and he gets around as much as he can. He's, he's not far off finishing. But he loves it. He's, uh, he's my legend. What a sense of satisfaction, what a sense of pride you must get. The time, the effort to put in to get these cars back out and then to see it on track. The fruits of the labour is so cool. Oh, you're right. And uh, you got guys like Timmy Timmy Osborne out there in the in the number six car, which is a genuine uh, Bill Barrows car. And the time and effort that he's put into that car is amazing. Um, Bill, Bill Barrows has seen it and he said it's be in better condition than, than when he ran it. So, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of time and effort into these these older cars and uh, it's a credit to some of the guys. Yeah, it's, and it's a really good atmosphere out when we're out there mucking around. It's, it's mucking around, it's demonstration. We have a ball. Enjoy it tonight. Thanks, Gav. Thanks, everyone, for turning up tonight. Thank you. Jason Feltham, who, as we said, he raced that Castrol New South, and I say raced loosely, Jake. He spiritedly demonstrated that New South Wales 2 last week in that feature event. And that was a tacky track down at Warnable. So he should be our first event of the program coming up in a couple of moments as they grid up. Jake Morrell, good to have you here at Avalon Raceway. The V8 Dirt Modifieds are also on the card here this evening. So green flag will wave them off. Yeah, it looks like we're away, the vintage sprint cars, doing a little bit of a demonstration as we just mentioned before. Peter Swandale in that Victoria number one just sits in P2 at the moment. We continue green and there's just watching Tim at the moment, doesn't want to pass on the inside in turn three and four. The track is a little bit greasy at this point. Just running a little bit mid-track, all single file at this point. As we said, it's a demonstration. It's not full race conditions, but it's definitely out there to give us a little bit of piece of history where we're at at this point. It's a hard thing to just dial it back, isn't it? A lot of these guys, Jake, have raced or are former racers, and a really hard thing to detune yourself, I'm sure. But then you've got to consider how much 
where do you buy a part and a component from for these a vast majority of these race cars i've got to be honest they're so difficult to come by yeah they certainly are and you definitely don't want to do any damage not only to the visual but also to the uh, mechanics of the whole machine because no doubt these are the pride and joy that sit in the shed whenever the grandsons or granddaughters come over or anybody it's what they take out to go and see and they might not understand the history but they can certainly respect it the amount of time that's gone in to put it on, oh, just as I was saying, Peter Swandale just goes around yeah, turn one and that. two. And you, you talked about it, it's, it's hard just to, you know, build up a little bit of pace and maybe just throttle it where you know what you've got underneath you. You've got a little bit of power. We're not talking about your, your casual Commodore that you put on the, the streets here. These have got a little bit of power behind them. I love too that our... President of the Sprint Car Racing Association, Ian Vale, is on the infield. I know that Vale, he's got a couple of restored Valvoline number no. fives down in a little place at the Warnable Motor Museum. An iconic Valvoline number no. five of Max Dumbs, the Vale is. You can imagine how many nights he would have tried desperately to span a Max to a win over that Castrol number no. two. Such a cool era, and he's only got eyes for the Castrol number no. two. I know that he's probably got to get back to. He must be down chaining a transponder. He is, of course, the head of timing here this evening for the sprint cars. The yeah. white flag is out, Jake. I want to catch a word with him if I can. Well, Gav, you would believe it or not, we actually caught up with him with our pre-Avalon Raceway show that's on Facebook. He did a full interview, and I know it's not someone that we normally see behind the camera, but he was emotional about in terms of Eureka Garage and Sheds, and no doubt we'll touch on it over the last 25 years, but he's up and about, and... He's exciting. He's been part of it for so long now.